Now we're going to do some factoring where a is greater than 1 and you try the common factoring and there are no common factors. And that actually takes a little special set of steps. Now in the video here, I'm just going to go through and do the mechanics of it. In class, I'll explain why the mechanics work the way they do. It's fairly complicated and it doesn't really lend itself to video very well. The mechanics do, but the explanation doesn't. All right, so you're trying to factor something where A is greater than one. Try the common factoring works. First, if that doesn't work, we're gonna do these steps here. We're gonna find factors of A, C that add to B. We're going to split BX using the factors that we find right here. And then we're going to factor by grouping. <clears throat> now, what does this mean right here? Well, let's go ahead and let's just do it so that you can see. My first example is 5X to the second plus 12X plus 4. So step one says find factors of AC that add to B. Well, A's value, don't forget, you've got AX squared plus BX plus C. The value of A is 5, and the value of B is 4. So we want to do AC. Well, AC, 5 times 4 is 20. So we want factors of 20 that add up to be 12. So that's kind of similar to trinomial. All right, so 1 times 20 and 2 times 10. Hopefully right away you've got the ringing going here. And hey, 2 times 10 is 20, and 2 plus 10 is 12, isn't it? All right, <clears throat> next it says split BX using the factors. 12, and we've got 10 and 2. So I'm going to write 5X squared plus 2x plus 10x plus 4. So notice what I did there. I took this and I took this 12x and I split the factors. Again, remember, this is just mechanics. I'll give you the explanation in class on why this works. All right, now, factor by grouping. Remember, grouping is the one that has four different terms. Well, I've got four terms here. You do common factoring to the, to the pairs, and then you do common factoring again. So 5x to the second plus 2x, what do they have in common? They have an x in common. And when I divide both of these by x, I get 5x plus 2. And then 10x and 4, what do they have in common? Well, they have a 2 in common. And then I get 5x plus 2. All right. So <clears throat> right here now, these both have a 5x plus 2 in common. So I write 5x plus 2. And these leftovers, x plus 2, go in the parentheses. So if you were good at common or factoring by grouping before, it's just the same thing once you get it to this point just takes a little bit of work to get it there. All right, now, one thing that I want to say, and sometimes students think this, is they think, wait a minute, you wrote 2x plus 10, but what if I had written 10x plus 2? All right, so I'm going to do a little quick erasing here. I'm going to leave our answer, though, because that is our answer. But what if I had instead written it in the other order, and I had written 10x plus 2x. Okay, let's do the factoring again by grouping. What do these have in common? Well, these have a 5x in common, don't they? When I divide both of these by 5x, I get x plus 2. What do these have in common? These have a 2 in common. When I divide these, I get x, divide both of these by 2, I get x plus 2. Take a look. x plus 2 is in common. There's x plus 2 in my answer. And the 5x plus 2, the stuff on the outside, goes inside the other parentheses. So regardless of the order you write those, 
that middle term in, it's going to factor out and it's going to work. All right, let's look at the second one. 3x squared plus 10x plus 7. All right, find factors of AC that add to B. A times C is 21. So I've got to multiply to be 21. And well, hey, what's 3 times 7? 3 times 7 is 21. So now I'm going to write 3x squared plus 3x plus 7x plus 7. Now, <clears throat> I want to just make sure this is clear. You split the bx using the factors. Since 3 and 7 were the factors that added up to be 10, there are other factors. I know I didn't write 1 times 21. I didn't write the negative factors. We just happened to look at it and see it. That's why I went right to it. But you take that 3 and 7 and you split it up. So that it adds, <clears throat> and you'll notice it will always add up to B or B. Now we just do factoring by grouping. 3x squared and 3x, I can factor out a 3x. Divide by 3x, divide by 3x, leaves me x plus 1. With this one right here, I can factor out a 7. Divide both of these by 7. And that also gives me x plus 1. They have an x plus 1 in common. And that leaves me with 3x plus 7 for the other parentheses. <clears throat> so you can see just it just takes a little while. It takes some practice. Now, and notice there's nothing in common that you can factor out of there. So all of the examples I'm giving you are like that. Um, let's try to do one more. Twelve x squared plus eleven x minus five. Twelve x squared. My, I think I might have said plus minus eleven x. No, it is plus. Plus twelve eleven x minus five. Obviously, I've got your notes over there. I'm looking at. Them. All right. <clears throat> A times C that adds to B. Well, 12 times negative 5, that's negative 60. So I'm looking for, for factors of negative 60 that add to 11. Oh, wow. You know, some of the other ones, you can look at them and you can see them right away. If you can't see it, just start listing factors. That's okay. All right. <clears throat> One. Negative 1 times 60, no, 1 and 60 aren't going to work. Negative 2 and 30, 2 and 30 won't work. Negative 3 and 20, that won't work. We're getting closer, though. Negative 4 and 15. Notice how I'm just working that up systematically. Negative 4 times 15, that is negative 60. And negative 4 plus 15 that's positive 11, isn't it? So I'm going to break this up. 12x squared minus 4x plus 15x minus 5. All right, factor by grouping. Look at the first two. They both have a 4x in common. Divide by 4x, divide by 4x. That would be 3x minus 1. Hey, remember, if the whole thing is there and everything cancels, it's a 1. 15x minus 5, they have a 5 in common. Divide by 5, divide by 5, gives me 3x minus 1. And yeah, these problems are contrived. You'll notice it always seems to work. All right, so now we have 3x minus 1 and 4x plus 5. Now, I think it goes without stay, saying, if you want to make sure you got it right, you can always re-multiply it out, and it will come back, all right? Follow these mechanics. The tricky part is remembering to do A times C and to split your factors. I think the factoring by grouping, you guys are pretty solid on. If not, you'll get some more practice. Anyway, good luck.